Welcome to another episode of History's Weirdest. Today, we're stepping back into the Middle Ages to explore the bizarre, the flamboyant, and the downright weird fashion trends that grace the courts and streets of medieval Europe. Fashion trends throughout the ages have always looked strange, unless you're living through them. But these are definitely odd enough to make you question medieval style sensibilities. From cod pieces to bare brows, get ready to discover the wild world of medieval fashion. Trust me, after this, you'll never look at your wardrobe the same way again. Let's kick things off with a fashion trend that's hard to miss, the cod piece. Picture this, it's the 15th century, and men are strutting around with padded pouches prominently displayed at the front of their trousers. These were the cod pieces, and they were all the rage. The cod piece started as a practical solution to a problem. In the late Middle Ages, men's hose, basically tights, left little to the imagination and a lot exposed. To cover this, they began using a triangular piece of fabric. Over time, this modesty patch transformed into an exaggerated, padded, somewhat armored, and often ornate accessory. Cod pieces were not just for show, they symbolized virility and power. Men flaunted them as a way to display their masculinity. Imagine walking around with a conspicuous sign of your manliness, bobbing with every step. And yes, it was as awkward as it sounds. But the cod piece also had a practical side. It provided much needed protection in battle and was even used to hold small items like coins and keys. Talk about multifunctional fashion. Next, we have the Henin, the iconic princess hat that looks like something straight out of a fairy tale. These tall conical hats were popular among noblewomen in the 15th century, especially in Burgundy and France. The Henin was a status symbol with its height reflecting the wearer's social standing. Some were so tall, they required wires to keep them upright. If you think balancing a modern hat on a windy day is tough, try wearing a head in that's three feet tall. To add to the drama, these hats were often adorned with flowing veils and jewels. Walking around with a head in was like carrying a portable castle turret on your head. But hey, who doesn't want to feel like royalty? even if it means risking a neck strain. Henins were often accompanied by elaborate hairstyles and headpieces, making the overall effect even more striking. They were the Instagram-worthy fashion statement of their day, capturing the eye of every passerby. Now, let's talk about a trend that might make you raise an eyebrow, or rather remove it. In the late medieval period, Women plucked or shaved their hairlines to create the illusion of a high forehead, a look considered to be the epitome of beauty. This practice, known as depilation, extended to eyebrows as well. Women believed that a bare forehead gave them a noble and intellectual appearance, so they would pluck away, leaving themselves with a forehead as expansive as the Serengeti. Imagine the dedication, hours spent removing hair just to look fashionably bald. It's like the medieval version of Botox. Painful, but beauty knows no bounds. And if you think eyebrow grooming today is intense, medieval women took it to a whole new level. This trend was so prevalent that even paintings and sculptures from the period depict women with these exaggeratedly high foreheads, showing just how deeply ingrained it was in the standards of beauty at the time. Also known as Krakows, these shoes popular in the 14th and 15th centuries were characterized by their ridiculously long pointed toes. The longer the toe, the higher your status. Some poulains were so extended they had to be stuffed with moss or whalebone to keep their shape. Imagine trying to navigate a crowded medieval street with what essentially amounts to a weapon on your feet. These shoes were the medieval equivalent of today's high heels. Impractical, uncomfortable, but oh so fashionable. Walking in Poulains required a special kind of finesse. It was less about getting from point A to point B and more about making a grand entrance. In fact, 
The toes of these shoes became so long that sumptuary laws were eventually enacted to restrict their length. In 1368, Charles V of France issued an edict banning their construction and use in Paris. An English poem from 1388 complained that men were unable to kneel in prayer because their toes were too long. Apparently, there was such a thing as too much toe. Next up, we have Slash Dublaze. Picture a jacket that looks like it's been in a fight with a particularly angry cat. These garments, popular in the late 15th and early 16th centuries, featured decorative slashes through which contrasting fabric was pulled. The origin of this trend is quite dramatic. Legend has it that Swiss soldiers, after winning a battle, patched their torn clothes with bits of fabric from enemy uniforms. This ragtag look caught on and evolved into a high fashion statement. Slash dublés were a way to flaunt wealth and style. The more intricate the slashing, the fancier you were. It was like wearing a walking art piece, each slash carefully crafted to reveal glimpses of luxurious fabrics underneath. This fashion statement became so popular that it spread across Europe, with nobles and royals alike adopting the style. It was a way to showcase one's wealth and fashion sense without saying a word. Hair today, gone tomorrow. In the Middle Ages, hairstyles weren't just about looking good. They were packed with symbolism. Let's start with the tonsure, a haircut sported by monks that left the bald spot on top of the head, symbolizing religious devotion. Then, we have the elaborate braided styles of the noble women, often adorned with ribbons and jewels. These hairstyles were not just about aesthetics, they were statements of social status and marital availability. Hair was a powerful symbol. For example, loose hair on a woman often indicated youth and virginity, while married women typically wore their hair covered. A medieval woman's hairstyle could tell you her life story, if you knew how to read it. These hairstyles were often maintained with the help of maids and hairdressers showcasing not just personal style, but also one's access to skilled labor. It was all about making an impression, whether at court or in everyday life. Finally, let's delve into the world of party-colored clothing. This trend, popular in the 14th century, involved garments divided into sections of different colors. It was like walking around in the fashion equivalent of a jigsaw puzzle. Party-colored clothing was a favorite among both men and women. It symbolized wealth and boldness as dyeing fabric was an expensive process. The more colors, the richer and more daring the wearer appeared. In Ireland, this trend took on a unique twist with laws dictating which colors could be worn by different classes. The result? Outfits that looked like they were designed by someone with a penchant for patchwork. Garments could be divided vertically or horizontally, and the different colors often represented family heraldry or allegiance. This fashion was particularly popular among the noble classes who could afford the luxury of such intricate and colorful designs. Imagine the effort that went into these ensembles. Each piece was meticulously crafted to ensure the colors and patterns lined up perfectly. It was a testament to the wearer's wealth and the tailor's skill. Medieval fashion was a kaleidoscope of colors, styles, and symbols. From the ostentatious codpiece to the lofty henin, each trend tells the story of the society that embraced it. These bizarre fashion choices were more than just clothing. They were statements of identity, status, and sometimes even sheer fashion absurdity. Next time you're frustrated with today's fashion trends, remember, the medieval poulain or the slash doublé. Fashion has always been a way for people to express themselves, sometimes in the most peculiar ways. And let's be honest, our modern day fashion disasters pale in comparison to the bizarre trends of the Middle Ages. So, next time you visit a historical site or see a medieval painting, Take a closer look at the outfits. Behind each piece of clothing is a tale of creativity, social commentary, and a touch of the bazaar. The history of fashion is full of surprises, 
and the Middle Ages were just the beginning of our sartorial journey. Thanks for joining us on this colorful journey through medieval fashion. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more weird and wonderful tales from history. Until next time, keep it weird.